ever, you know, you don't go, go back and meet yourself type thing. Yeah. yeah everything ends, you know, uh, that's a, basically the thrust of what's going on behind the scenes that you have a hard time figuring out what's actually happening. Now, here. did you get the cliff notes for this movie before you went? <laughs> no, no, I uh, uh, actually, he sense. did. They I know us... I didn't read it till after the movie. Well, yeah. Okay, I was joking. They really no, 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 gave, no, no. They, they gave they, us the comic books. Richard, get, this is one of the, oh, oh, the, two, of the, the, the two graphic novels, the three, three graphic yeah. novels that came out. Three See, that's another thing. Novels. He tries to introduce this shit like Star Wars. Like, I don't want to have to read some shit before I go into the movie. Like, he introduces the movie as four, five, and six, when apparently there's like one, two, and three out there already well, in comic So did before. George Lucas. So, yeah, but, know, but, but he ain't no George Lucas. No, though. you're right. You're absolutely right. He's not. But he does have a lot in common with David Lynch. And I think what we're going to see from this guy in the future is more hit and misses. You're going to see those films that hit really hard, like Donnie Darko. And you see those films that only have its fans based in his serious hardcore fan base, like Southland Tales. What do you think? Well, I was actually going to mention the fact that when Star Wars was released, it wasn't released as Episode Four. It wasn't until two years later that they added the crawl with Episode Four. That's on true. It. Uh, once he got the green light to do his next film, and he knew that's what was happening. No, um... No, I think that it's just the problem is, is he try he's aiming too big and he didn't have an idea. It's like those pe it's like the 21 year olds who sit down to write the great American novel and they just sit at the typewriter and they just start typing. Uh, the great American novel is something that just happens. You cannot set out to make it and make it. It's just something that becomes a product of the time. And he's setting out to make something way too large, way too ambitious, and he doesn't know where he's going with it. And you're absolutely right, too. This is, and he kept saying it himself, that he was trying to make a movie pop art, like Warhol was doing with paintings. He's trying to do pop art. Why? One of the reasons why everyone is such exaggerated acting in this, why he's got so many pop culture icons that pop up playing parts that don't even vaguely resemble anything you'd expect them to play. Like, seriously, folks, John Lovitz is a hard-nosed cop. Dude, yeah, I mean, Kevin it's the most Smith, bizarre it, casting ever. Kevin Smith in, like, 10 pounds of makeup playing some security guard. Yeah, and those didn't work for me. Let me I, I'm just going to go ahead and be accusatory here, and I don't want to offend anybody because I'm not going to say you shouldn't enjoy the movie. If you do, that's fine. But I do believe that there's a lot of people who love Donnie Darko. They see Richard Kelly as probably being smarter than he is. And even the best reviews for this movie have said he has almost too much to say are it's confusing. But if you just walk away and soak it in, it's, it's such a cop out to like say a movie that is as confusing as this is a movie that you just need to go and think about for a long time. Or you don't get it. Or if you just open your mind and accept it I, that, to me, that really is a cop out. And I think people want to make this movie good who are giving it positive reviews. I myself I'm calling bullshit on this because I really do think it was a guy who tried to cut, try too hard to reproduce either what he did before Donnie Darko. He tried to reproduce too hard people that he admired like Philip K. Dick. And he also tried too hard to do, as you say, make this big piece of pop art. And it's a big failure. Go off and make another movie. I'll give him another chance. I'm not criticizing him, but this right here, terrible. There's nothing wrong with your reaction. And to be honest, I've told other people already, no, don't go see this. You're not going to like this. But I know some people who I think there's a good chance they are really going to like this. And they are going to go, oh, my God, I can hardly wait to see that again. And they're going to want to read the comic novels. And they're going to want to be immersed in this mythology. The problem is it, it isn't really all that good of a mythology overall. It's not structured, as Carlisle says. It's got a lot of problems. He, he doesn't really know where he's going. But there is a, enough going on that it's not boring. It was downright fascinating to me at points. I just wish he had taken more time and really figured out what he wanted to do. So for that, for me, it's still just a rental. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, it is. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, no, we do. We don't have anything lower than some old bullshit, do we? No, it, <laughs> this is. Dude, wow, this, you really you want to give it lower than some old dude, bullshit? Dude, it's this was this was awful, and and I I mean I hate I mean to I'm say, there with really, you, man. I love I love Richard Kelly, I really do. I'm the one guy. I'm probably the one guy sitting in the room that really loves Richard Kelly, and that not only do I love Donnie Darko, Domino, I, I love Domino, dude. I love the script he wrote for Domino. Uh, I dig that film. I've got that poster on my wall. But you know, uh, this was a big mistake. This is exactly what happens when the studios. Uh, trust in somebody so much and go, you know what? I don't get it, but I guess he's smarter than me. And I don't want to admit publicly that he's smarter than me. So, um, I'm just going to go, Oh yes, it's genius. This is people kept asking me, dude, how did all these big names get in this? How did they get in this? They didn't get it. And when their agent said, no, you can't do that. They said, no, 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 this is, 
I don't get it, but that doesn't mean it's not genius. And mm-hmm. everybody went into this thinking that they just weren't getting it, that they weren't smart enough, but didn't want to admit it. And sure enough, oh, guess what? No, you weren't. It wasn't that you weren't smart enough. It's that Richard Kelly wasn't smart enough. Yeah, and and, I, and let me explain why this is like the worst movie for me. More than something like the comebacks are probably even movies I haven't seen like Daddy Daycare and Bratz. I think those movies know their audience. And they're not, they're not even trying that hard. So in, in the process, somebody smart knew that they were making brats and just said, hey, we'll just feed off the audience that's out there for it. Same with the comebacks. I mean, all those movies are stupid. And they go in knowing that they're stupid. This movie is really trying to make something monumental and therefore fails in a monumental way. That's my logic behind it. Uh, and, and it's not. And believe me, I was not hating on this movie because I heard things about it. Not at all. I don't believe you were. I think no. you've got it nailed. The worst, the the worst crime it's committed is that it's too ambitious. It's wildly ambitious, and I think it knows the audience it's going for. And I think it completely knows the audience it's going for. It's just not a very big audience and it's a real small it's even smaller than the people who love donnie darko like significantly smaller than no, that no, 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 no. The, <laughs> the movie's worst crime is that it sucks shit through a straw <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh now come on yeah. i no. saw you pay good money to do that last weekend hey you know what <laughs> and he's a genius for doing it <laughs> hey that guy did it in the middle of the road you know somebody had to pay to suck it <laughs> and i tell you too um i just wanted to say also a little disclaimer here i do think richard kelly is is a very smart guy mm. i think he needed a failure like this i think somebody didn't hold him back i think he's probably had a little bit of ego going no, in into fact, this if you if mm. you look at the, the best example is sit down at home those of you who are doubting us those of you who are saying those guys don't know what they're talking about richard kelly's a genius sit down tonight and watch the the theatrical cut of donnie darko and watch how brilliant it is you know you want to watch it again it's such a good film in fact i'm probably going to go home and do that right now then sit down and watch the director's cut <laughs> and watch just how everything goes wrong and realize that it was when the studio and his producers reined him in, he made a brilliant film, but that when he was let loose on his own, his vision was way too big and he didn't know Thank what he was you, doing. Man. This film needed somebody to smack him upside the head and go, dude, you're a genius. Stop being a fucker. Okay. Just fucking make a good movie. And that's what he needed. And I think this is what's really going to show him. Yeah, dude, you need to listen to somebody else. Yeah, he definitely does. Richard Kelly desperately does need an editor. No question about it. And you're right. This is the film that hopefully will teach him. Look, all the best guys work better with somebody else reining them in. You know, I mean, why do the Star Wars movies after Empire are are not that good? It's because there's no Gary Kurtz anymore. Exactly. That's exactly it. He needs somebody to whoop his goddamn ass is what he needs. That's just me, though. I'm, I got yeah, anger oh, issues. Here, here's another great example going on that, since we're just what? tying this is the audio review section. Okay. Uh, look at the uh, the regular cut of uh, uh, of Grindhouse, of uh, Tarantino's uh, Death Proof, and then look at his director's cut, where he stepped away from his editor, who always edits him, and had his longer, elongated version. And it's just, it's... Damn, there's a version longer than what was originally I was, there? I, was say, I think I'm still that. in and, the theater watching yeah, the original no, version. No, the, the funny thing is, is it's 20 more minutes of oh. girls talking. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. He that didn't cut any plot. It's 20 more minutes of, of MySpace. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> And you you laugh, but that's what what Tarantino said. He spent two years on MySpace learning how girls talked for that movie. Well, he that's talk- how girls type. <laughs> it's text message the movie. Yeah, he was talking to guys <laughs> who were posing as fourteen year old girls or something because that not that is not how any women I know talk. But I usually don't let them talk at all when they're around me. So. Their mouths not- are usually full, yeah. huh? <laughs> and they're crying. <laughs> <laughs>